All right, welcome back, everybody, to more Horizon Forbidden West. Managed to get part one out of the way, got that all edited, rendered, uploaded, and live for you guys. Now I can actually settle down and focus on more longer-term recording. So without much further ado, let's just get straight back into it and proceed. That's a big storm picking up out there. Yeah, and they're getting stronger and more frequent. So the storms, the blighted lands, the rivers and lakes choked with algae. You were born to fix all that? Yeah, but I can only do it if I find that backup. I think we're winding our way around to the data center. We'll need to cut through that big building on the right out there. Yeah, it's nice to be able to just get that first part out. It's, it's always a little bit stressful because obviously when you... When you do this thing full time, those part ones, especially for these major, highly anticipated releases, they're here? they're always important. Hey, Lloyd, come check this out. Yeah, I'm coming. Hold on. Um, so yeah, until that first one goes out and it's kind of out there on the channel, it's always a bit stressful. But once that's done, you can always start to sort of just ease into it and think more about the game and enjoying the game and making progress, as opposed to as opposed to you know got to get that part one done and got to prepare this. Am I have I got it on time and all that kind of stuff? So it's definitely nice. Now we can just chill. What is this thing? It's data. You can scan it with your focus. Let's see. Mm. Huh. This a data lot mentions of glyphs. the tech that Farzenith traded with Zero Dawn. I'll tuck this away to study later. It doesn't explain how they got it back up. Okay, so our first proper data point. Let's have a read through these. Now that we're in chill, kind of slow down and just immerse and enjoy the game mode fully, might as well start to read these things too. Right, High Council Executive Summary. Negotiations with representatives from Zero Dawn have concluded, and I am exceptionally pleased that we've arrived at a mutually profitable agreement. It shows that sugar usually goes down better than salt, in contrast to the less tactful recommendations of certain of our more reactionary members. In short, Far Zenith will provide a copy of the prototype Homer archive already sent, 500 ectogenic chambers to be retrieved from storage at our Ninmar facility, supplementary ectogenesis research reports. In exchange, Far Zenith will receive a copy of the alpha build of the Apollo database in the week prior to the Odyssey's launch. By our estimates of Zero Dawn's timeline, by then, it should be a near-complete repository of human knowledge. It should be noted that Dr. Sobek was very reluctant to agree to this, but I drew a line in the sand, making it clear that this was a non-negotiable term. As for our faithful representative, I will continue to run all public communications with Dr. Sobek's team while... So yeah, there was another copy, well, the alpha build of the Apollo database that was present I'll on the I'll keep an eye out for more data. ...as well. So, I mean, if we're heading towards this whole narrative that the Odyssey wasn't actually uh, blown up and actually made it to its destination, then things get very interesting because they would have a copy of the Apollo as well. Honestly, I don't remember too much about the Odyssey section. I believe we found out that it failed in the first game. But I don't remember specifically the, um, the story around that because there was just so much of it. So, I mean, maybe it's already been definitively proven that the Odyssey failed, but in my mind, it looks like it's setting up to potentially not be the case. Looks like we've got to climb up. No problemo. Yeah, so this is definitely helpful. I mean, it... I guess it, it, it is, it's a mixture of helpful and hand-holdy. I think everyone has a, has a different interpretation. Are you okay? Okay. Yeah. Guess we won't be going that way. Fine. Do a bit of this. Is that not? I thought we could snap to that, but we can't. Fine. Well, it is a thousand years old. Yeah, it does look like it's falling apart, so fair play. 
Honestly, that kind of stuff doesn't bother me too much. Like, even in the first game, the climbing was fine. It just feels like something they could improve on a little bit. I think Looks I was a like some kind of meeting room. That door on the other side's locked. There's another one of those glowing things by the table. I think I was a little bit spoiled from playing um, Zelda Breath of the Wild, like in that, because you can literally climb everything. This Maybe that of... thing at the table does something. Okay, man. Calm down. Um, this whole kind of pre-planned, you know, they put all of the, the things they need to grab onto in a nice neat line, and then you climb across and stuff. Like, I wonder when freeform climbing in games with this kind of fidelity and style are going to start to become more of a thing. Onzu. The Zero Dawn terraforming system, the brainchild of Dr. Elizabeth Sobek, empowered by nine subordinate functions, Gaia, the core of the system, is capable of advanced planetary engineering, an obvious advantage to our space colonization efforts. Operation Phase One. Establish an asset within Project Zero Dawn. Status complete. Phase two, the asset will secretly beamcast a complete copy of Gaia and her subordinate functions to this facility's data center. If all goes well, Zero Dawn staff will remain completely unaware of the transmission. Risks. Discovery of this operation could result in Zero Dawn withholding the already negotiated Apollo database. Special care must be taken not to alert Travis Tate the expert hacker in charge of Hades protocol. In addition, extreme caution must be exercised in regards to Dr. Sobek herself. As one of the world's preeminent technologists, she may have instituted unforeseen security measures. A complete assessment is attached. This concludes the executive summary. I thought Elizabeth sent the backup here, but she didn't. Far Zenith stole Gaia. Aloy, why does that woman look like you? <laughs> uh, um, it's okay, Pearl. We look alike because we're the exact same, genetically identical. But she was one of the old ones. How can you be her? Because I wasn't born, I was made by a machine. It's why I'm motherless, why I was cast out as an infant. I don't understand. What kind of machine can make a person? Remember when I said the backup is like a set of instructions? It's more than that. It's called Gaia. And for a long time, she cared for the world until she had to destroy herself. So she made me. To bring her back. I'm the only one who can. And this place is my last hope. You once said the goddess spoke to you when you went into All Mother Mountain. Was that this Gaia? Yes, but she's not the goddess, Oral. There isn't one. How can you be sure? It sounds like she anointed you with a sacred task. <sighs> I've had a lot of time to figure this out. And you will too, with the focus. But for now, the reports said they were going to store the stolen copy of Gaia in the data center. So that's where we have to go, okay? All right, cool. Yeah, I think Val being unaware of the, the whole story with this kind of stuff is nice because, hold on. Ah is good because obviously if you're not quite up to date with the story you haven't had a recap you haven't done a playthrough near the time there might be a few things to do with the original story that you don't remember although you're not as clear on but at least he's obviously asking some questions that are going to help you piece together some things if if you don't remember as well from the first game so let's have a read of this one 2065 esteemed members of the high council the latest intelligence report is attached i expect i'll have another update at the end of the week Attachment Elizabeth Sobek. All sources indicate Dr. Sobek continues to work obsessively on Gaia's development, pushing herself to psychological and physical exhaustion. Despite managing a large team, our sources note that she spends most of her time in isolation, which is consistent with her previously documented habits, detailed fully in her main file. 
Conclusion. Dr. Sobek remains unaware of Project Anzu. Sources will continue monitoring for any change in behavior. Ted Farrow. Mr. Farrow continues to exhibit extreme guilt and psychological instability. His savior complex, detailed in the main file, renders him incapable of dealing with his culpability for the impending extinction of life on Earth. While his attention is largely preoccupied with the construction of Thebes, our source confirmed he recently coerced Hank Shaw into installing a secret back door into the Zero system, capable of superseding Alpha, Alpha Authority. It is unclear what Pharaoh intends to accomplish with this, but while it may pose a risk down the line to Zero Dawn's success, it should not impact Anzu's goals. Conclusions. Irrelevant into far Zenith's aims. No further action necessary. Hank Shaw. The latest check-in with Mr. Shaw confirms he is continuing work in his role as, as Project Beta of the Hades subordinate function, and his connections to our organization have gone undetected. He has demanded premium accommodations for his birth on the Odyssey, which was agreed to. Conclusion. Mr. Shaw is on target to deliver a copy of Gaia. After transmission, he will be removed from the equation prior to the Odyssey's launch. Refer to the action plan. Damn. So Mr. Shaw is going to put in all that work get them the copy of Gaia, and then he's going to be removed from the equation. Aloy, over here. I found something you could use. Yeah. I guess everything, there's just so much going on in here, like with the exploration side, they're helping you. Can't help them. To not get too overwhelmed with the navigation. But, I mean, despite that, I feel like I'm going to be missing stuff. Let's see what this is. A weapon. Thanks, Merle. We should keep moving. After you. Right. Uh, nice. Blast slings. Yeah, I think I... We had something similar. It was like a slinger or something from the first game. Uh, frost bombs. Yeah, okay. Cool. Now... Just leave this room again. Let's see what to do. Down here. Can I not like go across there? You know what? Screw it. I can just jump. Don't need to do anything too fancy. I think we're almost back outside. Good. Alright. Look, that must be the machine. It's heading in the same direction we're going. Great. <laughs> so, of course, uh, those of you guys that have seen Dan's Away playthroughs where there's a photo mode and we have these very pretty games, you know that I like to try out the photo mode. Now, I think you have to pause the game and enter the menu to do it. Let's see how it compares to something like Ghost of Tsushima, which still has my favorite um, mode so far. I don't know why I can't... Why can't I, like, crane up, crane down? I can't move. Hold on. Maybe the camera's a bit stuck here. Let's try this again. There you go. Okay, I was going to say, that was weird. Camera was stuck in the cave. Precision mode. Let's just leave that on anyway. Hide the player. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this game is just going to have basically an infinite number of photo mode options. I mean, just look at this. <laughs> That's ridiculous. The fact that games, that just looks like concept art. You know these really high quality concept art so you get for games? It basically looks like that to me. It just looks great. It really does. I 
I mean, look at that. That's basically just like concept art right now. Doesn't look like it's from within the, the game itself. We really have come a long way. Look at that. Stunning. Really, really nice. Um, what else? Time of day unavailable here. I guess once you go out into the open world, then it probably is available. You can add some vignette if you want to get a bit of that more kind of cozy feel. But yeah, it looks amazing. So if I ever do uh, mess around with photo mode, I'll kind of show you guys the results. Obviously, I won't show all the messing around with the settings. But I do love me some photo mode. Wow. I actually framed some of my favorite photo mode shots that I took from Horizon Zero Dawn and from Ghost of Tsushima. Okay. Um, here we go. Well, let's just let's do the scan first. Yeah, scrounger. Weak versus ice, but even weaker towards like corruption. Let's see. I can do more damage to it while it's brittle. I'm okay. Switch to my bow. Uh. Big machine must have attacked as they tried to escape. They didn't stand a chance. Looks like we can cross over here. Yeah, um, I mean, if you guys are watching the DLC more recently that I was doing, the the freeze them and then hit them with a the rattler technique was really good. So, so it always helps. You said this backup is the last hope. Yeah, all those places I've been these last few months, there were supposed to be more backups. But a thousand years ago, a guy named Ted Farrow purged them all. Was he part of Far Zenith too? No. He was worse. Wow. Oh, man. I do wonder when we're going to get to like a proper open world section and this more linear part is over. I think the first game was kind of similar. It started more linear and then it opened out and then it became more linear again towards the end. I can just keep dropping ledges here, I don't have to do anything crazy. Okay, I think that's about the limit that I can drop without <laughs> taking damage. So yeah, I'm sure anyone that's seen any of the trailers and stuff will know that there's uh, there's underwater uh, swimming and stuff available. There, there's a, I think there's an entire section that's underwater. But they're not giving me a tutorial on how to do it, but that's my guess is it's like this. So we'll get our first glimpse of the underwater vibes. I don't think this part is particularly designed for this, but... It's too shallow, it's kind of not right for it, but... I'm sure we'll have a proper section to, to try that out soon. If they haven't given you any tutorial on how to do it either, it's like you're not expected to be doing too much underwater business at this stage. Okay. Whoops. I mean, that is where I need to go. Did I just not do it right? There you go. Okay. It was just a jump fail, I guess. Um, hmm. Is there anything other than Ridgewood there? If it's just for that, I'm not going to bother. Right. B 
but yeah, just so luscious and so full of life. It's it's really impressive in that sense. I'm sur I thought there might be some more like animals and stuff scuttling around. That's the one thing I would say at this point. Like underwater, there was fish, and we've seen some dead foxes. Now, that big metal thing looks like the ship we saw back in the auditorium. Imagine going up to the stars in that. Well, there you go. I guess that is the Odyssey. I mean, if he, if that really is the Odyssey, then maybe not. But maybe there was a backup ship, or there was a different plan. I don't know. These guys couldn't catch a break. Just gonna check across anyway. But yeah, I was going to say, in terms of the, the lack of wildlife so far, you could possibly say that because of the blight and all that stuff, a lot of the animals are dying, so that's why there's not as many around. But I don't know. I mean, if the, there's a lot of plants that don't have any blight on them, so maybe there should be more at this point. Because, I mean, even in the first game, there was plenty of, like, I don't know, goats and badgers and foxes and whatever roaming around. So, I don't know. This place seems like it's even more ripe for life than the first Machines game. Machines patrolling ahead. We can tag them in the focus to keep track of them. All right, let's do that. Okay. Oh, they're, they're coming quite close here. This machine unaware, suspicious. Okay. I need to quickly go and find my cover. Okay, let's go. I feel like I should be able to sneak this one when it comes past. It shouldn't be that hard. And then the other one's on its own anyway. Of course, there's going to be plenty of times where I'm going to try and do this whole sneaky thing and I'm going to screw up and it's going to turn into a big fight. So the tempo is going to rise regardless. But it's literally scanning right now, so... Okay. That's that one down. Do we have any more cover? Oh shit. What was that? What was that? Hmm. Yeah, there's definitely something there. There it is. Okay. Damn. It's suspicious now. Let's see what happens. Can I just take this one out too? Oh, that was a mistake. I thought it was a prompt. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Uh, it's so bloody sensitive. Hitting it exactly in the right place is tough. There you go. How's my guy doing? There you go. Okay. Okay. Now how do we get out of here? Yeah. Instead of search scrounger, I thought that was the sign and prompt. I was I was ready for that sign and kill. <laughs> But there you go, that was a perfect example of me trying to stealth the section and then failing. That's going to happen pretty much throughout. And honestly, I think entertainment value wise, it's, it's a good thing that it does. There's a ladder in the back. It's satisfying for me when I do manage to stealth an area, but it's also fun to, to fail as well. Right. I've still got three. 
machine ripped right through the wall. Yeah, I was gonna check that bit. Yeah. What's in here? Yeah, already the the stash is starting to look good. I'm hoping if there's any data points, just tapping it is enough. I don't have to go into this mode and kind of search out data points like this. I don't think so, but I'm not sure. Ancient supply box. Yeah, there's still a fair bit here. I'm going to invest in all this stuff early because I can literally carry it through to the end of the game. So, well, I think I can. Because once you start finding big stuff and you can't stealth, your resources just deplete very quickly, depending on your playstyle and skill level. Just the sheer complexity of these environments. So tell me something. Sona was really okay with you not going back to the Sacred Lands? As the Nora War Chief, she understood why I was obligated to follow you. But as my mother, she wasn't pleased. Is she ever pleased? I don't think I've seen her smile. Me neither. <laughs> but yeah, this little view here, I thought looked pretty dope. Filters-wise, there doesn't seem to be that many new ones. They seem to be pretty much the same as Horizon Zero Dawn. I mean, there doesn't need to be loads, but I feel like that would have been a pretty easy addition to put some new filters in, but fair enough. Okay. So like these random little glowing bits, I thought they were maybe data points and stuff, but they're just, just remnants of the old age. slaughtered all those Osirum, we'll never get through to the data center. There's no way to slip past them. They're too tough to fight head on. We could find a settlement. Convince some hunters to help us. That would take weeks, and we don't have that kind of time. Maybe all we need is that shuttle to fall. That thing? How? We'll figure it out. Just wait here. Aloy! Trust me. And there she goes. Just need to get over to the shuttle to figure out how to make it fall into the basin. Okay, if you say so. So I think for this one, we're on our own. That's good. Like I say, the companion stuff is all well and good, but you've got to have some of these uh, sections where you're on your own too. Straight into stealth mode. We don't have backup this time if we just screw up. I can make it to the tower. I should be able to find a way across to the shuttle. Okay. We need to find their paths. I think I can just take this one right now. 